Okay, Doc. Yes, thank you, Steve, for your kind words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now I speak to you in my office at 9 a.m. Saturday of Beijing time. And please allow me to extend my best wishes and appreciations to everyone joining me at this moment, especially to those in your late night. With the deepening of reform and opening up, as well as the rapid growth of economic construction in recent years, China's urban development is facing a new round of challenges and opportunities. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh, Your microphone moved again, and we couldn't hear you. Unfortunately, it has to see. down. There you go. Yes, it is good. It is good. No, it's, huh? it's too quiet. It, it needs to be closer. I'm sorry. I see. Sorry about this. Is it good now? Yes, thank you. Ah, yes. Shall I start now? Yes, I think morning, you can just continue. Ah, uh, yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. With the deepening of reform and opening up, as well as the rapid growth of economic construction in recent years, China's urban development is facing a new round of challenges and opportunities. It has been fully realized that transformation is necessary, not only in terms of the economy, but also on social, cultural, and ecological fronts. China is now entering a new stage of comprehensive restructure, restructuring. The recent news on bankruptcy of Detroit City in the United States came as a wake-up call, reminding us of the similarly enormous employment pressure and the challenges being confronted by numerous cities in China. Then what does urban transformation indicate for library. City cannot prosper without talents. Talents are the foundation and innovation source of creativity, creative city. In this age of transition, the prospect of cities to adapt to the new situation for a new leap forward depends on the support of human resources. According to a survey by PricewaterhouseCoops, among 40,000 enterprises surveyed in 39 countries, 34% found it difficult to find the right people. The percentage in the United States was even higher, reaching 52%. Mackenzie predicted that by 2020, the gap between talent demand and the supply would have reached about 24 million, and the problem would become more serious in developing countries such as the RIC countries, with China up to 74%, Brazil 63%, Russia 57%, and India 53%. In China, some multinational companies often hire their executives overseas rather than employ local Chinese people. Although over 600,000 engin engineering students are graduating annually, only one-tenth of them are possessed with expertise required by foreign multinationals. The urban transformation calls for the change of social education. We put excessive emphasis on expanding enrollment to universities as if only an undergraduate programs could produce talents. Yet, as the survey revealed, only one third of positions in future require a bachelor's degree, whereas the rest can be assumed with vocational education. Over half of the companies globally cannot find students with suitable expertise, whereas 67% of small business regarded difficult to find technicians. 
libraries, just as schools need to reflect on transformation accordingly. We cannot expect universities to teach students all the skills society demands. And that is why we are pro promotion, promoting lifelong learning. When the society is shifting its focus from academic degree to true capaci capability, libraries should take the initiative to assume the so social responsibility of lifelong education. <clears throat> What does society expect from library? Recently, Michael Ridley, the chief librarian at the University of Guelph, Ontario, Canada, led a thought experiment beyond literacy, which was turned into an open book of 20 chapters on the internet that was co-written by dozens of students. The term literacy refers to a person's basic cultural competence, which can be integrated as three R, that is reading, writing, and arithmetic. People can be engaged in normal work if possessing three R. Beyond literacy, however, presents a very radical point of view, exploring the possibility of post-literate literate future in which the traditional literacy is replaced by new capacity of dealing with information, digits, and technology. While public library has been committed to enhancing literacy over the past years, such a mission is now facing challenges as well. Today, more public libraries are paying attention to three L, that is literacy, or literacy, uh, cultural literacy, information literacy, and vocational literacy. The first L, literacy, refers to the pre previous three R, which indicates the long-held task of library to nurture citizens' basic cultural literacy. This is of particular importance for immigrants who wish to be integrated into the new community depends on libraries' assistance in local language learning. Information literacy is an important task that modern libraries are actively promoting. Many universities have included information literacy into public curriculum taught by librarians or incorporated relevant info information into their library resources and services. Vocational Literacy becomes important nowadays. Basic literacy skills could qualify people for normal jobs in the past. But today, reading and writing skills alone are insufficient for, em uh, for employment in the knowledge-based economy. Again, however, libraries are cap capable of providing trainings for the public so as to help fill the sk skills gap. In practice, many libraries have already conducted the experiment, adding vocational training to their services. How should libraries respond? The new president of library, Sidika Spila, starting from 2013, is carrying out her presidential theme, which reveals the two issues to her primary concern the impact of library on social development, and the challenges of technological develop, development to library. To further understand the new theme, we need to pay special attention to two documents published during the 2013 conference, conference namely, IFRA Statement on Libraries and Development that is issued on August 16 this year, and if a trend report issued on August 19 this year. Seneca Spiller's presidential theme is strong, strong libraries for equal and innovative societies, which was of significant value for the future direction of library development. We had studied the relationship between library and reading 
that it is now high time for us to emphasize the relationship between library and social development. Since the millennium development goals were expired at the end of 2015, the United Nations is now promoting the post-2015 development agenda, and the nations and organizations are ex actively competing for says in the post-2015 plan. For example, the European Report on Development 2013 highlights the importance of inclusiveness and sustainability besides the central objective of poverty eradication, and thus propose the specific objectives such as structural, structural transformation and a productive employment. China Development Research Foundation proposed in towards equitable and a sustainable development China's perspective on the post-2015 international development agenda to center on human development and hence six pillars, namely to ensure steady economic growth and the creation of economic opportunities, to invest in human capital, to promote fairness and inclusion, to promote environmental sustainability, to improve governance, and to restrict global governance mechanism. IFLA is also actively seeking for its own voice. It participated in the World Summit on Information Society, hosted by International Telecommunication Union, to advocate access to information as a fundamental element supporting development. IFLA has continued such an effort ever since the summit was initiated in 2003 and expressed a stand on behalf of the global library community. In the 2003 summit, IFLA circulated the posters depicting 10 success stories of libraries, including the case of the Shanghai Library and its achievement in eliminating digital divide. Recently, the high-level panel of eminent persons on the post-2015 development agenda produced a report accentuating the promotion of access to information and the government's responsibility to provide the citizens with living and working skills. The past President in Ingrid Parent said, if the welcomes comes to report's focus on transparency and accountability and seek to increase access to information for all in the post-2015 development agenda. Under such contest, Library published IFLA statement on libraries and development and set out a clear vision of how libraries contri contri contribute to development. In accordance with the series of re reports issued recently, libraries and especially public libraries should shift their focus from reading to more inclusive literacies and stress information literacy, vocational literacy, and other useful literacies so that more people could master relevant skills for employment and improve their well-being. I regard this new trend of IFLA as of high priority for the community. Our voice is too small to be heard concerning issues such as intellectual property rights and the national legislation on reading at home. Our own weakness should be blamed on, and that's why President, President Spiller called for the libraries all over the world to unite to build a strong library and contribute to social development. How should library advance social development? Previously, library emphasized reading and subordinate lecture, training, and cultural activities. Today, library not only regards the latter as similarly important as reading and learning, but also takes on the new mission to advance social 
development. The first, to enhance information literacy. Information literacy is an important index of life quality. Urban development derives its impetus not only from the information infrastructure construction, but also, and more importantly, from the improvement of citizens' information literacy to enhance the city's comprehensive competitiveness. Therefore, we must incorporate information literacy into urban development strategy as an indispensable agenda for libraries, the education and cultivation of information literacy should be prioritized accordingly. As advocated by the IFRA statement on libraries and development, libraries to reflect the social and cultural inclusiveness should create conditions for citizens to gain equitable access to information and to participate in the urban development. As the basic literacy, information literacy is the critical ability to digest information and the key to improve their education, develop new skills, find jobs, build businesses, make informed agricultural and health decisions, or gain insights into environmental issues. For instance, financial literacy is required for most of the wealth management projects today, and the public libraries could thus conduct financial literacy seminars and training for the general public. Another example is health literacy, which can be nurtured through public health lectures and on-site physician consultation preparing library patrons with the ability to make better decisions. These are the new programs libraries could consider developing in the future. Two, the second, to enrich the ways of experiencing. Information is everywhere. To obtain more complete and accurate information, people often resort to tools such as a communication tools, search engines, computer software, and a variety of network applications. With the development of information and communication technologies and the resultant emergence of various tools, libraries should strive to equip readers with proper tools and provide them with experiencing services from the provision of books to that of information and then to tools is a big step forward. Libraries should include experiencing services as a regular service in future. Many public and research libraries have opened makerspace for and public office in the hope of facilitating the equal access to tools and technology experience. The third, to provide vocational guidance. It is a new trend for the global library community to extend services from reading to vocational guidance. Schools and institutional libraries are planning to incorporate the new service into their own developmental goals. According to the State of America's Libraries Report 2013, three quarters of public libraries offer software and other resources to help readers fill out job applications and seek for job information, whereas above 90% provide formal or informal vocational training. Such is not common in China. In view of an increasingly grim employment situation today, libraries should make a difference. The statement advocates libraries to participate in social development through providing career guidance and clearly defines such a function of public libraries. The practices of U.S. public libraries in career information services evidence the potentials of libraries in promoting urban transformation and stimulating employment. The fourth, to in innovate learning environment. 
what libraries used to provide was reading space, whose layout was designed in accordance with that of library building, and which limited the ex exchange between people and information. Many libraries have now opened a space for information sharing, which is uh, conducive to interactions and thus the new learning mo mode. But most of others are sticking to the basic layout oriented to traditional reading. Given the separation of print and electronic resources, it will be foreseeable, for, foreseeably daunting but critical task to create a learning environment that integrates on-site and virtual learning and enables bilateral interactions. It is daunting in that the majority of libraries remain dominated by print resources, and it takes time for them to transform from a complex of reading rooms to that of a learning spaces. Now, I would like to give you some examples of the Shanghai Library, driven by the strategy of promoting innovative urban development. The Shanghai Library has reflected on the social value of library, actively enriched library services, and experimented with efforts to advance the social, economic, and cultural development of the municipality. I take three exam examples here. The first is about e-books. It, it has become the consensus of the international library community that we are entering the digital age when print books and e-books coexist with each other. Over the years, we have been concerned about the prevalence of digital publishing over traditional publishing in terms of publication, in terms of sales. PwC predicted in June that this year that the U.S. trade e-book market will surpass the size of the print book market by 2017, while another source foresaw the occurrence in 2020 for Japan and China. Starting from 2008, digital publishing has been growing at a, digital, at a double digit and even triple digit pace, approaching the tipping point. While digital publishing is to become the mainstream form of publishing, our libraries prepared, initiating the landing service of e-book readers in 2009. The Shanghai Library has been exploring ways to normalize e-book lending. From 2012 onward, it started a promotional plan for digital reading, and with the cooperation from public libraries on the district and county levels, put nearly 2,000 e-book readers into circulation. After exposing readers to digital reading, we will resort to cloud service and adapt the currently popular BYOD, that is bring your own device, means to activate electronic reading devices at readers' hands. Of course, the unification of e-book formats will take a long time to be realized, and the libraries alone cannot decide on the de development of digital publishing industry. As librarians, we are managing the content rather than the medium, and we are going to present to readers one platform, one catalog, and a one-stop service. The second example is new space for creativity. When the Shanghai Library opened a new space for creativity, it was met with suspicion. But we were not the own owner of this idea. Rather, some public and research libraries in the United States had made attempts before us and created maker space. That is, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, for instance, the municipal library was suffering the loss of readership, in view of which the new director, Colin Hill, hired five young talents to innovate the whole library 
soon after she took position. They changed the fourth floor into a space for innovative tools such as 3D printers and thus attract local residents back to the library. Why should library establish such a space? Because we should offer readers not only reading service but also basic vocational training that prepares them for new positions. A great number of creative professionals and enthusiasts have been attracted to the newly opened space for its 3D printing equipment, electronic sand tables, as well as resources on creativity. And more importantly, similar minds also available inside the space are discussion spaces, facilities for lecturing, and meditation space where individuals could sit down in a small tent to browse the web and listen to the music. Not long ago, a group of young readers organized their own design contest here and presented their works with 3D or sandbox. The space also drew attention from the government and enterprises with expre which expressed will of cooperation. Recently, our innovation proposal has been approved by the government, so they will pay some, they will give, give us some funding. That paves the path for the further development of the new space for creativity. Modeled on its success, the library will up upgrade other reading rooms. For instance, Shanghai Local History Reading Room launched an activity named Shooting Shanghai, and with the works thus collected, held a first exhibition on the scene of Park Hotel, which opened in 1906. The event marked the expanded function of themed reading rooms and changed the reading room into a social space for information exchange on Shanghai local history. The third is in-depth par participatory reference services, or I call it enhanced reference services. The value chain of library service should be further extended. We were content with information provision and stopped right after consultation report was submitted to clients. Whether the report was adopted or not, not or not, sorry, whether the report was adopted or not was beyond our concern. In other words, the previous reference service is a one-way communication model. This unilateral communication is obviously outdated nowadays, as can be demonstrated by the global declining amount of library reference requests in the recent decade. According to the 2008 Academic Library Trends and Statistics by Association of the College and Research Libraries, ACRL, the reference requests were done between 1998 and 2008, with the decrease more obvious on the part of higher degree holders. For instance, the weekly average number of reference requests from undergraduates decreased from 184 in 1998 to 146 in 2008, whereas the requests from doctorate Doctoral students dropped from 2,031 in 1998 to 15, sorry, to 592 in 2008. The downturn in reference service is not only related to the development of social networks and a socialized reference system, but also attributed to the monotony, monotony and the lack of interaction in traditional reference service. At the end of 2011, OCLC rele released a research report entitled Seeking Synchron Synchronicity, 
relevance, relevations and recommendations for virtual reference, which reminded the community of reconsidering the R in reference as that in relationship, and suggested that readers turn to library not just for answers to questions, but for partners and guides in a lifelong information seeking journey. By transforming virtual reference service encounters into mutual cooperation, li librarians can better participate in readers' information space with a more am amiable and e equal, stance, uh, equal stance. Therefore, it becomes an urgent issue for us to enhance the reference ability of librarians and the quality of reference services. We should collaborate with users to solve their problems and realize the increased value of open information. Shanghai Manual, a guide for sustainable urban development of, of the 21st century, jointly compiled by UNDESA, the International Exhibitions Bureau, and the Shanghai Municipal Government details a case where the Shanghai Library participated in the information consultation for urban development. The case study was not written by the library, but by the experts from BIE. The story not only evidenced the contribution by the Shanghai Library to Shanghai World Expo, but also confirmed the role that the library has had assumed of intellectual support, supports. The library provides a wealth of information on the Expo, organized hundreds of lectures, and compiled a dozen of books before and during the Shanghai World Expo. More importantly, we participated in the theme development of the Expo, in the planning of venues and forums, and even in the compilation of Shanghai Declaration and Shanghai Menu. In future, the Shanghai Library would continue the efforts and take an e even more pro proactive stance to participate in the urban innovation and transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, every city and every library is positioned on the same starting line during the process of innovation-driven transformation. Whoever sees the opportunity will win the initiative, and whoever has the talents will have the future. Libraries do not only need innovation and transformation. Libraries do not only need innovation and transformation. We should enable more people to keep up with the pace of urban innovation and transformation. It is a challenge, a test, and a chance for librarians to demonstrate their value to the society. Thank you very much for your attention. So this is all my presentation. I wait for your criticism. There won't be any criticism, only applause. If anybody has a question, please feel free to put it in the chat, or you can uh, raise your hand and we'll let you take the microphone. So John, if you would like to, the microphone can be turned on by clicking on the talk button at the top left. Jenny says thank you. She has taken away an idea from this presentation. Oh, thank you very much, indeed. Thank you very much, Jenny. OK, I think we're done. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. Thank you.
very much, Steve, for your help. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye.